Hello fantastic people! I hope you are doing great. Today we'll talk about events. But before we do that, let me share something with you. Yesterday we managed to get 500 subscribers, so thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. For this occasion I decided to start our own Discord server. Feel free to drop by and become part of our community. And now let's get to events. We don't usually think about it, but at the very core, a game is really a one huge infinite loop. I mean, not every game, and of course the loop is not really infinite, but I think you get the point. We more often than not take advantage of this mechanism. If we have a look at a typical script extending mono behavior, we'll see some methods which are executed in loops. For example, update or fixed update. And that's where most of our code lands. As the game grows, so does the amount of code in those methods. If the code is not properly written, this may quickly become a problem. I mean, it can even if it's properly written. You start with 10 objects on the screen, and then at certain point you have several hundreds. Yep, it can get pretty nasty. One of the things that come to the rescue are events. The idea is pretty simple. Instead of executing code in a loop every certain time, we execute it only when certain event happens. Let's have a look at some examples. Here I have very simple setup. Skeleton with box collider and rigid body 2D and sort with a collider marked as trigger. Let's imagine it's a simple tutorial area. Once we grab a sort, we want the enemy to appear. Let's have a look how we can achieve that using events. This time using Unity events. Let's create a script and call it collision events. Inside of it, let's create private serialized variable of type Unity event with a name on trigger enter. To be able to work with Unity events, we have to use the Unity engine namespace. Now we create on trigger enter 2D method, and inside of it, we check if the collider 2D is actually the player. We don't want to react to any other collision. To check that, we can try to grab a player specific script like player input provider. If we found it, we call the invoke method of the onTriggerEnter Unity event. If the onTriggerEnter is null, we don't want to get the null pointer exception, so we add a question mark. Now let me explain how it will work. Event variables are like bags full of actions. You can easily add and remove items from them. And once the invoke method is called on the bug, all actions one after the other are executed. Normally we add and remove the actions programmatically. But Unity events are special. They allow us to add and remove actions directly from the inspector. We can drag and drop the listener and then conveniently select the action. We can not only manipulate the properties of different components, but also execute public methods that are part of the scripts on the object. For this example, I will add two simple actions. I will make the skeleton active and the sort inactive. Let's test it out. Fantastic! I think you can see how convenient it is. And not only convenient, but also very powerful. Now let's have a look at the regular c -sharp events. But before we do that, let me tell you two words about the naming convention. Well, in the previous example it sucked. I used the on event name, which is not really the proper way. The name of the event, as the name suggests, should be the event. Like clicked, triggered, item picked up, broken, damaged, and so on. The method that invokes that event should start with on, like on triggered, on clicked, and so on. However, sometimes those methods are skipped and the event is invoked directly in another method. We'll have a look at that now. This time we have several sorts, and each of them has an item script. We'll have a look inside of it in a second. Then we have a skeleton. This time it's active, but its gravity scale is set to zero. Oh, and of course the skeleton has the skeleton script. Let's have a look inside of the item script. The critical line is this public event action picked. To declare the event, you use the keyword event, followed by the type that describes the parameters that will be passed to an action and the action's return type. Now, the type called action is the simplest of all. It doesn't provide any parameters and has a void return type. We invoke it exactly the same way as the unit events. Then, in the start method of the skeleton script, we grab all of the items in the level and add the reset gravity scale method to the list of actions that should happen when we invoke the picked event. Just a small side note, this way of grabbing all items in the level is not really ideal. In one of the future episodes of the scripting series we'll discuss why and how we can use the service locator pattern to do it the proper way. If you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's have a look at how we can invoke an event with some parameters. 
I created small enum to help categorize items. Let's use it as a type for newly realized variable in the item script. Because sometimes we may have different actions for different items, we'll try to pass the item type as a parameter to the invoke method. The simplest way is to use the generic action type, then simply pass the value to the invoke method. This, however, is not the most extensible way. Basically, every single time you would like to add new parameter, you will have to do quite a lot of changes in code. And the other problem is that parameters will not have dedicated names. Better way is to use the generic event handler. As a type, you provide to it class that will contain all the variables you would like to use. The class should extend the event args class, but I realized that it works even without it. I'm really interested why is that. If you know that, please let me know in the comments. Then the invoke method will require two parameters. First one, the sender, that is the object that fires the event, and then our event arguments. That means that all of the actions we want to execute have to have exactly the same signature. Now we can use the data provided in the event arguments. For example, reset the gravity scale only if the item is a sort. In our scene, let's remove one sort and change the other one to the axe. And let's test it out. Fantastic! Recently I've been asked how to incorporate the verbal height jump into the movement created in my first YouTube tutorial. This is a perfect opportunity to do that. Back then we created input provider which was a little bit tricky to work with. Let's rewrite it to use events. I think this exercise is worth doing because it will serve as a perfect introduction to Unity's new input system. So our input provider is based on the interface. This interface contains one event and one method. In our case, the event is the most important thing. It utilizes the event handler with a custom type. This custom type, as expected, extends the event arcs. It contains two variables. The first one is the input action, which is enum at this moment containing only one value jump, and the second variable of the type trigger, which is also an enum containing two values up and down, representing the button press and button release. This will allow us to inform the interested classes what type of action has been requested and if the button behind it was pressed or released. Now let's have a look at the actual input provider. As expected, it extends the mono behavior and implements the iInputProvider interface. That means it has to have our event. Now we have a simple method called fair action event, which invokes the event with the right parameters, depending on the action and button provided and on the fact if the button was pressed or released. I just realized I set the sender to null. Let's change it to this. Then let's have a look at our platform movement script. In the start method, we grab the iInput provider and store it in the variable. Then we add an action handle input event to its event. Let's have a look at the action itself. We check the arguments to check if the action is jump and if the button was down, we apply jump. This method is pretty simple, it simply sets the vertical velocity to the right value. Then if the action was jump, but the key was released, we adjust the height of the jump, which in practice means we decrease the velocity if it's larger than zero. And this allows us to have the verbal height jump. I hope in this video you learned something interesting about events. If so, like this video. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.